Hello agents and welcome back to another daily episode of beginner and returning players guide series your daily farming guide for Thursday February 25th. In this series I cover a lot we got the target loot map, dark zone exclusives as well as named items, highlights for the weekly vendor resets and cassie and build and farming suggestions as well. This is Shadow Gaming, and if you're new to the channel or enjoy this video, consider pressing the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below, and if not, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. And always remember to hit the bell notification to all so you never miss a daily morning video, and comment below if you have any questions or feedback or anything at all, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, agents, let's start this show. Alright agents, well starting off with the dark zones and of course vendor reset highlights which are always in that big bottom left overlay. I guess I kind of recommend the safety distance at the White House. That vector SBR in Haven is pretty good because it's got the four slots that you need and the baker's dozen at the theater. And always remember to get that fox's prayer from Cassie. She's got it right now I believe. She might still be open so definitely check that out if you didn't pick them up already. Now over here in DZ West today, we got a doozy. So this is where you could farm for the Dark Zone exclusive called the Gift Backpack, comes with perfect vigilance. Now with this backpack, you still get that 25% damage buff, but you know, you only lose it for three seconds instead of four, which just overall has an overall longer sustained DPS because of that backpack. I heavily recommend farming for it, especially with the optimization station now available, so you can max it out with weapon damage, crit hit chance, and crit hit damage. Next up in DZ South, we got another great Dark Zone exclusive for mass. That's going to be the Hollow Man mask with 8% damage to health, a uh, Yawl Gear Hollow Man mask. Now, that one goes on certain builds, especially if you mix it with Walker Harrison Co. with its damage to health as well. You can do some serious damage on some good builds. And then, of course, you could always still hunt for the, you know, Coyote's Mask and the Vile Mask, the two exotic masks in this game. The Coyote's Mask being great for DPS builds, and only one of you needs to be wearing it in the team to get the benefits of it. And then, of course, the Vile Mask becomes stronger from its debuff if you use the Demol uh, Demolitionist Specialization. And last but not least, you could also farm for the Punch Drunk Mask, which comes with 20% headshot damage baked right into it. But I would honestly farm Douglas and Harding if it was available today. And then last but not least, we got DZ East, ongoing directive. Now there, like I always mention, you know, two really good bleed damage builds for you guys, and I'll probably have to do a video on this. And it'll probably be part of my best of build series, but my first one I recommend is the Ridgeway's Pride, four piece ongoing directive, and the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked, which you could farm today at East Mall area. And then of course the second one being the four piece ongoing directive, a vile mask and a badger tough backpack with creeping death talon and that's because I run the carnage with perfect sadist and the scorpio. And of course Cassie is actually selling a carnage with perfect sadist as well if you want to pick that up. It's rolled and it's alright but you could optimize it and re-roll it as well. And that's about it for the dark zone so let's go check out the north side and invaded missions next agents. Alright agents, north side, starting off with the invaded missions, we got Camp White Oak and then Bank Headquarters, DCD HQ, and your two strongholds is Roosevelt Island, and then as always, Tidal Basin Stronghold. Alright agents, now on the north side, first off we got Richter and Kaiser at Camp White Oak, so this is where you can find the Forge Holster at 50% shield health, which is equivalent to a whole extra skill tier worth of shield health. I recommend farming this over knee pads if you're looking for just specifically the forge and the claws out is a DZ exclusive unfortunately. And then next up of course we got Douglas and Harding at Cody Allen Ballpark. This is where I would farm for the punch drunk and then we got holsters at the amusement park so you got three exotic holsters you could farm for in this game. You got the waveform holster which is uh, season 4 reward level 90 and then of course you got the imperial dynasty holster and the dodge city holster. The waveform's great for alternating 33% skill damage between skills like a turret and drone. The Imperial Dynasty is great for status effects and skill damage on an Eclipse Protocol build. And the, of course, the Dodge City is great for headshot damage builds and pistol builds. And then really, Wyvern wears for skill damage if you need it. And then of course, you know, the Kinley College area is closed. And the summit you pick your own target loot. So let's move on to the west, then east, then New York City last. Alright agents, starting off in the west side areas with the gear sets first, thank god we only have one that's strikers at constitutional hall, so I always recommend just three pieces for increased rate of fire and weapon handling and never any more than that, neither the chest or backpack as well. And that's because an all high end red DPS build is going to deal a ton more damage than this, you need like at least 90% accuracy rate for this to even pan out that well. 
and on average even on pc it's nowhere near that now starting off with regular target alu let's go ahead with alp summit uh, at this dcdhq area this is starting to become a very favorite backpack of mine it's the uh, alp summit named backpack percussive maintenance with perfect tech support on it it gives you 25 percent skill damage for 27 seconds now unfortunately it comes with 20% repair skills instead of that 10% skill haste you get from the force multiplier backpack with perfect combined arms, but I really am finding this awesome. And then next up, the chest piece is a Lincoln Memorial area, stands out to me heavily. If anyone needs that tardigrade exotic chest piece armor, today is the day to get it for sure. And of course you could farm the Ridgeway's Pride if you've already you know, done the project from the summit, but otherwise, you know, the tardigrade is a true sun's faction exotic. And its original main source is True Sun's Mission, so this is a really good increased rate drop rate chance. I believe it's a 3% increased drop rate chance for the Tardigrade here. And then moving on, we got gloves over here at Tidal Basin Stronghold. This is a Black Tusk Invaded mission, so the, once again, just like the you know chest piece with Tardigrade, the BTSU Data Gloves, which grant overcharge to you and any ally at skill tier 6, has an increased drop rate chance, I think of 3% or more because it's a black test mission. So this is something else I would highly recommend farming for, especially for skill healing or maybe even skill damage builds as well, granting you and your team overcharge. And of course you could also farm for the contractor's gloves with 8% damage to armor. Although I believe the clan vendor is selling one that is pretty good as well. You know, you could just farm Petrov if it's available as well. And then next up we got Overlord at Roosevelt Island. You can find the Fox's pair knee pads with 8% damage targets out of cover. I highly recommend getting it from Cassie before she's gone this week. She's got a really, really good pair of Fox's prayer that I highly recommend picking up. It's, you know, I think every agent should have a pair of those for an all red DPS build, whether it's rifle or not. And then of course I always like to remind you guys, pistols at Foggy Bottom area, remember the TDI card custom pistol with plus one skill tier when equipped it is a Dark Zone exclusive as well as the Orbit with Perfect Finisher. And then of course if you would like, you could check out my website shadowgaming.network in the pinned comment video description below. That will show you a Dark Zone exclusives guide on how to get them and of course all the Dark Zone exclusives that there are. And the last couple we got is the you know, knee pads at West End area, so you got two exotics, Sawyers, and then of course you got the... Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads. Now the Ninja Bike is for running gun builds like, you know, you vault or cover to cover to get 25% bonus armor and instantly reload your equipped weapon. And then for Sawyers, you sit still and gain 1% weapon damage for 30 seconds all the way up to 30% weapon damage. And as soon as you flinch your move, it starts dropping down by 1% until it, you know, restarts. And then of course we got some machine guns at Federal Emergency Bunker. Now there's three exotics, the Lady Death, the Backfire, those two you could straight up farm for, but the chat box I will put my guide in the top right card now which is a quick little five minute video on how to get the chatterbox and complete the quest it's actually easier than just straight up farming sub machine gun targeted loot and then of course you know remember the dark winter in the apartment are dark zone exclusives do not farm for them outside of the dark zone unless it's named item caches you know it's just just check out my dark zone exclusives guide on my site but the named ones I recommend for sure is the Grudge with Perfect Vindictive and the Safety Distance with Perfect Outsider. Those are two really good SMGs that are named that drop in the light zone and are really good on certain builds. And then last but not least, we got MMRs at Bank HQ. You could farm the Mantis straight up. The Nemesis, once again, I'm going to have to direct you to my website, shadowgaming.network. It'll show you how to get the Nemesis step by step. Or if you've already gotten it, you could refarm for it here. Otherwise, I'd recommend the Ekim's Long Stick with Perfect Ranger and then the White Death with something like Boomerang or Rifleman or Ranger rolled on it as well. And that's about it for the west side. Let's go check out now what we got on the east side, Agents. Alright agents, so east side target Lou highlights. Let's start off with the gear sets to get those out of the way. So Foundry Bulwark, you Grim Washington Hotel. Remember the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive on normal difficulty, so keep that in mind when farming for it. But otherwise, just run Emperor's Guard knee pads as 1% armor regen and one piece of Bellstone Armory for another percent of armor regen, and that is a great tank build that's non-raid exclusive. And then we got Rigger over here at Viewpoint Museum. Now Rigger is a great gear set for instant cooldowns and it gives you skill damage upon that instant uh, skill cooldown as well. It's great for deployable skills and turret and drone for changing targets. And then lastly we got Aces and Eights over here at Capital Building Stronghold. Now Aces and Eights is a great headshot gear set and you only need three pieces of it, then two pieces of Aralda holding, one being a backpack with vigilance or composure. And then of course the chain killer chest piece with perfect headhunter dealing 150% of your last killing blow, running it with the Mantis and Ekim's long stick with perfect ranger. 
Now for normal target loot, I'll start off with Badger Tough at Jefferson Plaza. Now of course you can find the Zero F's chest piece with Perfect Unbreakable that will repair 100% of your armor upon it breaking and the cooldown is only 55 seconds. You could also farm for the Creeping Death Talon on a backpack for Badger Tough as well for that ongoing directed bleed damage build. And then next up we got Bellstone at Space Administration HQ. This is where you could farm for the everyday carrier with perfectly efficient, but please comment below and let me know if you use this and what build you do. I have yet to get someone to reply to that. And then of course the Liquid Engineer backpack with Perfect Bloodsucker is a Dark Zone exclusive, so always keep that in mind when farming for it. And then of course we got Golong Gear at East Mall area. You could farm the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked at these four control points here and all activities in the open world area. And that's going to grant you 18% weapon damage for 27 seconds and that's upon applying a status effect. So that's why it goes great on, you know, Eclipse or Ongoing Directive because you're always applying a status effect. Next up we got light machine guns at American History Museum. Now of course you could farm the Bullet King and the Pestilence. The Bullet King you never have to reload and then of course the Pestilence you get the damage ticked over a million per tick but that is based off weapon damage not status effects. And then in the bottom left overlay there's going to be a bunch of named you know LMGs. The Black Friday with Perfect Unhinged is a DZ exclusive. The Good Times I think is as well. The rest of them are not. And then moving on to ARs at Air and Space Museum, remember the Dark Hours Raid exclusive Eagle Bearer cannot drop outside of the Dark Hours Raid, but there's two other ones that do. So the first one's the Chameleon with Adaptive Instincts, which you could just straight up farm for, and the second's Capacitor with Capacitance, but you need to complete five summit challenges first on any difficulty to unlock it. And then of course, just like LMGs, there'll be a bunch of named ARs in the bottom left overlay. I recommend the, you know, Burnout named FAMAS, the Maniac, uh, the Mechanical Animal. And then the test subject of Perfectly In Sync, those are pretty good named ARs. And then next up we got Walker Harrison Co. Judiciary Square. So this is where you can farm that chain killer chest piece with Perfect Headhunter, dealing 150% of your last killing blows straight to the head. And that's going to give you anywhere from 20 million a headshot with the Mantis to 50 million a headshot with the Nemesis. And then here's Petrov if you want to farm those Contractor's Gloves, I'd recommend the farming the brand over the type. And then we got Empress at Federal Triangle, I'll definitely put my favorite turret and drone build in the top right card and bottom left overlay now. And that of course is 3 piece Empress for that 10% skill efficiency, 2% or 2 Hana Yu, and then 1 Waveform Holster with Kinetic Momentum on the chest piece. And then I've been using the Percussive Maintenance Backpack lately a lot, but I normally use the Force Multiplier Backpack, and then I run the Capacitor and the Harmony as a secondary. And then also keep in mind Empress has two named items, neither are Dark Zone exclusive, and that Caesar's Guard with Perfectly Skilled, and the Battery Pack with Perfectly Calculated. And here is the third main source that you can get today at Jefferson Trade Center. You got rifles, so this is a hyena's mission, so this is where you're going to get the Merciless to drop fairly easy. And then of course you can also get the Diamondback to drop here as well, but the Merciless is a hyena's faction exotic, so it has an increased drop rate chance here. Otherwise, what I would recommend is some named rifles like the Baker's Dozen with Perfect Lucky Shot, and then the Surge with Perfect Spike, both of those are great, and of course the Harmony with Perfect In Sync, but that is a Dark Zone exclusive though. And that about wraps it up for the DC area agents, let's go check out now what we got in New York City. Alright agents, last but not least, we got New York City where all the gear sets are hiding I guess. So real quick, I'll just mention backpacks at the tombs. This is where you could farm for the Memento and the Acosta's Go Bag. Both of those are the two exotic backpacks in this game. The Memento is obviously something everyone is you know, looking for if they missed it during Season 3. Just remember, farm backpack targeted loot and it will eventually drop. And then of course China Lights for explosive skill damage builds, I'd recommend getting a chest piece of glass cannon or unbreakable, and then you know just any other piece you might need. Now moving on to the gear sets, which is the, all of them I guess over here, we got True Patriot at two bridges, I'll definitely include my True Patriot build in the top right and bottom left overlay, that is four pieces of True Patriot, the Memento Backpack, and a Sokolo of Chest with Intimidate running the Lady Death, and the Mop with 10% armor on kill, that is good to clear all sorts of content, literally, legendary, heroic, whatever. And then of course we got Hardwired at Stranded Tanker, running Butcher did a great build of 4 piece uh, Hardwired, China Light Chest piece with uh, Glass Cannon or Unbreakable, and the Vile Mask. And then we got a close protocol at Pathway Park. I'll put my favorite fire damage bill in the top right and bottom left. So that's four piece Eclipse. And then you got the Imperial Dynasty holster and one piece of Golong gear. I always run that with the Pyromaniac with Perfectly Ignited and the Capacitor, running it with the Firestarter Chem Launcher and the Stinger Hive. 
And then next up, we got Future Initiative at Wall Street. Just like Foundry Bulwark, the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive on normal difficulty. But no worries, just get an Alp Summit chest piece with Empathetic Resolve, a Murakami or something backpack with, you know, Safeguard on it, 4 piece Future Initiative, and that's a great non raid exclusive healer build. And then Tip of the Spear at Liberty Island, I don't normally recommend, but you can use it with the Survivalist specialization using the crossbow to just kind of strip off armor during legendaries and raids. And then lastly, we got of course Hunter's Fury at Battery Park. I'll put my favorite DPS build in the top right. That is four pieces of Hunter's Fury, the Death Grip Gloves with 10% armor on kill, and the Memento Backpack. And I always run that with the Dark Winter, the Scorpio, and the Orbit with Perfect Finisher. I usually run three armor cores, four red cores, and one skill tier from the Memento. Well, Agents, that was it for your daily farming guide for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider pressing those subscribe and like buttons below, and if not, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. And always remember to check the video description and pinned comment below for links to my shadowgaming.network website where I have all sorts of guides and useful info for you guys, as well as my merch store, Discord server, and Shadow Crew Clan on all platforms. But otherwise, take care agents and be sure to stay tuned for more daily Division 2 content. This is Agent Shadow signing off. I will see you in the next video. Take care agents and the weekend is only a day away.